All right. Well, thanks so much again for the opportunity and good meeting you. And uh, yeah, just wanted to speak with you about um, kind of your uh, career and then how that um, is impacting um, your uh, foundation. So I, I think it's uh, good that you're doing that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a journey. It's been a journey for both, you know, my personal football career and then also the foundation. They, they both kind of been a journey for me. All right, outstanding. Um, and so, so is there any point, or was there any point in your uh, life, you know, as you were coming up playing football, as you were developing into the player that you wanted to be, uh, was there any time during that time that you thought it was a good idea to maybe create this kind of foundation to help people? I mean, honestly, it just runs parallel with my story. Um, I grew up in running track and playing football. There was a, um, a track program that I was involved in. A lot of kids, um, they would have like a national track meet every summer um, that a lot of us honestly just couldn't afford to go to. Most of the kids I kind of grew up with uh, didn't leave our town, didn't leave our city. Um, and there was a gentleman named Dave Knight. Um, he was an insurance uh, salesman and uh, he was good friends with my coach. Uh, they, they had met, they were really good friends. Uh, he asked him, hey, we need some donations. You know, these guys have qualified for this track meet, but they can't afford to go. Um, and so, you know, Mr. Day kind of went out, you know, rounded up some money and, you know, we were all able to go you know, to the national track meet. And right. I think at that time he thought, you know, it'd be a one-time deal, you know, next year they would figure it out. And it really became a partnership for him. Um, and he began doing that year after year. Um, but at that time, um, um, they, he didn't, he didn't really know what his investment, what his time, the little donation right. he was given, uh, I'm gonna call it a little, the big donation for us, but for him, it was a right. small, it was a small amount of money. Right. Um, and to come full circle, you know, a few months ago, um, I was able to sit down and we had lunch and I told him, I was like, you don't know what that small investment did. Like it allowed me to see the world. It allowed me to see the possibilities and really helped me become that NFL football player, the guy who people get to turn on their TV and see on Sundays, but it was just by a guy um, just really making an investment uh, into some kids. And so when I got that opportunity, I made it to the NFL, and um, got into year three and, and I was undrafted and I signed a contract and I, I got to make some money. And the first thing I wanted to do was just give back um, generally because um, it becomes full circle just to see right. another kid um, say, hey, Mr. Jones, help me out, you know, that and no matter what I do, you know, it could be a STEM lab that we put in a school or from a football camp, something that will help a kid, you know, take their next step. And that's kind of why, you know, I named it the Next Step Foundation, because um, I always say you meet someone where they are and help them take their next step. Right. Um, so I just wanted to get the specifics down, Pat. Uh, so when that was first created, uh, how old were you and what, what school were you at? Um, so I was at Carrollton High School. I ran track at Carrollton High School. It was through the local um, local rec department that we run track through. Um, okay. And so I always kind of knew that, you know, I wanted to help people. And, you know, my, um, uh, one of my best friends, his mom, she'd always make us go volunteer at the soup kitchen. You know, and that was kind of something she always, you know, had us doing. Um, right. And so, when, like I said, once I got to the, uh, this was 2019, um, when I re-signed back to the, uh, to the Pats, uh, and I was just able to create my foundation. I think the first event, you know, was a football camp. And uh, from there, it was more for football than me. It was just an education. You know, I wanted kids to, to have an opportunity to have access to education and things that, you know, that they didn't have. So what do you think is the main purpose of, you know, doing all this? You know, obviously that really benefited you and helped you out on your opportunity. But through your perspective and through your eyes, you know, what do you think is the main purpose of, of all of this in terms of trying to help people? Uh, like just to make it full circle. I mean, it takes a village. You know, I'm from a small town, so I was raised off that concept that, you know, it takes a village um, and it takes, you know, everyone helping out uh, and just being a part of somebody's journey. You know, I think um, when you give and you donate, there's a, there's a small sense of selfishness in that, that um, not just since to make you feel good, but hey, I'm invested now into your journey. Like I get to watch you grow mm -hmm. because of this time I sent, I spent with you at, you know, reading a book to you. Uh, and I'm, I know you, I've built a relationship with you. And to see those people grow, you know, and become uh, become something, you're just sitting back waiting on that to come full circle to somebody to walk up to you one day and say, hey, 
like I am, I, do you remember me? I, you know, I attended this event you were at, or I did this and it helped me. Um, I, I think that's just the benefit of, of, of donating and, and having foundations and giving back. Um, so, you know, um, you know, you went through that, obviously you went to college and you went to Auburn and then eventually you get drafted by the Patriots. Um, so, you know, as you're kind of, um, traveling from city to city as a member of the Patriots, um, you know, what kinds of situations kind of inspire you, uh, that your foundation is needed even more, you know, do, do you see that, you know, when you go from city to city or how does that work? I mean, you see it a lot. Uh, I, I don't even say you have to leave the city. I mean, even even in Foxborough, uh, I look at the games and I look up in the stands and, you know, um, being from Georgia, being from Atlanta, you see representation. You see kids that look like you because this, the stadium is right there in the middle of the city. Uh, but in Boston, it's it's in the suburbs. So not a lot of the kids that are underprivileged get to come to games and, uh, and you see them at the, at the games. But just as you travel and you go to these cities, you see... Um, you see need, you know, it's not that it's not that hard to see if you open your eyes, you can see people in need, um, kids in need, and, and, and it's hard to just ignore that, you know what I mean? Right. Um, can you give me the details on what exactly your foundation does and where and when is it and what is the end result of all this? Yeah, so the Next Step Foundation, um, we, we prioritize ourselves on um, mentorship, mentorship, give life, practical skills, uh, and just really helping underprivileged kids um, take their next step, like literally wherever they are, um, what they may not have, you know, whether it's practical skills in life or, um, you know, teaching them dinner menus, because a lot of kids don't know how to sit at a proper dinner table, or, right. you know, putting STEM labs in schools that are underfunded, because I believe that, you know, technology is the future. So just having kids and giving them the access to these things that they don't have is kind of the end goal and just making partnerships um, because I'm not going to be able to do it alone and just building out uh, these partnerships that can help my foundation, uh, like building, working with iRobot um, and they're, they're a big partnership that we have and just, just building these partnerships and, and helping kids. I'm always avid about youth because like they always say that youth is the future, it's the future. So um, the best investment you can make is into kids because that is the future. And you always wanna leave it better than you found it. And, and, and that's the next step is the kids. So are you specifically working with these kids or do you have a team that's helping you out? Or you know how does that work? Yeah, I have a team. I have a team. Um, I have so much going on. And that's the beauty of, like I said, kind of having a village and having people around to help uh, facilitate, you know, even still my dreams and ideas. And I'll say, hey, you know, this is something I'm thinking of doing or something that I want to do. And they're able to hit the ground running and bring it to fruition for me. Um, but, you know, me going out, being able to go into these schools and, and just bringing people together. Um, so, like I said, the, my team um, takes, you know, my ideas or, or some things that they might bring to me and say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? And I'm like, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Um, and just, you know, everyone pitching in and kind of having the same synergy uh, and the same goals and, and getting everything done. Right. Um, so how often does this happen um, a year? Uh, can you kind of give me the details on what this looks like, um, how often it happens and where does it happen at? Yes, sir. Um, so we uh, do several events throughout the year. Um, I, I always start from my hometown. My hometown was the, the, the first place that I did any event. That's Carrollton, Georgia. Uh, and then we, we work within Auburn. We work the food substance and program uh, in Auburn to make sure that the kids there um, don't go without meals, you know, when they're, you know, away from school and, and for breaks and things like that. And then back in Boston, you know, those are the three areas that I service, you know, the most because those are the areas that impacted, you know, and built me. So we have several events that go on throughout the year. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to grow it, grow it outside of those places. But those are the three, um, three locations that are dear to me and kind of help build my life. So I'm able to, to start there and continue to grow from there. Can you think back on any particular instance that really um, um, hits home for you? Like, you know, maybe there's a certain kid that you may have helped out um, that you really impacted. Um, you know, is there maybe one or two instances that you can think back and you can kind of dive deep on that? Um, I, there, there's so many, but um, I, I had the opportunity. I was at Lower Mill School 
Um, it's a school inside of uh, in Boston, and I was there one day. Just um, you know, we were out throwing the football, and I got to do some science projects with them. And we were sitting up there, and we were doing fossils, and just the conversations, you know, that those kids were having. That I don't think a lot of people give those cre kids credit for the knowledge that they have and the deep conversations. And you can tell how aware um, those kids were, but you know, they lacked the resources, but their their knowledge and their awareness of who they are and where they were in this life. Uh, it just touched to me. They were, you know, asking, you know, what is the purpose of life? And, and, and the deep conversations that we were sitting up there having while we were recreating fossils out of clay, you know what I mean? But kids, are, um, just being able to touch those kids. And then, you know, my football camp that we have annually, um, there's a kid who's like, Man, I, I come to this every year. I, you know, I can't wait for next year. And just giving a kid something to look forward to, giving them hope and something they could be a part of. Um, can you think back to when you were coming up as a player, maybe think back to uh, Pee Wee or high school and, and maybe kind of uh, talk to me about um, some of the things that really helped you out just in terms of going on the right path, whether it's uh, maybe mentors that you met uh, growing up or coaches and kind of connect that to how your foundation can do the same thing. Yeah, uh, a big, I'm big on mentorship. Um, and that's kind of why that's one of the emphasis of the foundation, because, you know, I always say the easiest thing to do is to do something that's already been done. And the hardest thing to do is do something that's never been done. Um, but just, you know, on my journey, I can pinpoint who I was looking up to at every point in my life. I mean, as a kid, uh, there was a guy from my hometown, Delandis O'Neill, you know, we're still good friends to this day. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing that he did for me is he went to college. And right. so he showed me that that was possible. I was like, okay, well, I can do that. You know, a guy who came from where I came from, who looked like me, um, you know, he he went to college. He left our hometown. And for, for that, that's a milestone, you know, because a lot of people where I'm from, you don't leave. You don't leave Carrollton. It's a small town. Um, so when he did that, for me, I was like, okay, this is possible. I was like, what did he do? You know, all the work, you know, wanting to work. I would beg him, you know, hey, can we go back to the track? You know, after work, he'd be, he worked at a grocery store here in town. And, you know, I would go, hey, can we, can you take me to the track? I want to do what you did. Um, and that just grow, you know, from college, you know, different guys, you know, it's always somebody I can pinpoint and say, hey, I want to do what you did. And when I got to the league, guys like Devin McCourty and, and, and Matthew Schlater, who would, you know, when I got here a year eight or nine, and I was like, well, I want to do that. You know, I want to be there. And I look up and I just emulated things that they've done. Uh, and here I am looking up going into year eight. So that's why mentorship for me, it's just big, you know, um, right. and, and seeing yourself in other people and just kind of doing the same things. It's, it's not it's not that hard, but it, I'm not going to call it not that hard, but that's an easier path to take. It's just following in someone fits footsteps. Um, could you potentially spell that guy's name? Um, O'Neill's first name, please. Uh, Delandis, D-E-L-A-N-D-U-S. Delandis. Gotcha. Yeah. All but right, yeah, so I mean, it was, yeah, it was it just it, <laughs> the greatest thing he did for me was go to college. That He went to college because, like I said, I, I said it was possible. No one in my family had gone to college. Uh, and, and, and so to see him, you know, go to college and, 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 you know, play a sport in college, I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. I can do right. that. Um, so what college did he go to and did he ever uh, end up going to the NFL? No, he didn't. He ran track. He ran track, at Mississippi. Okay, he ran okay, track okay. at Mississippi State. Uh, okay. He went to a junior college. He went to Wallace Junior College. And then he went to Mississippi State. And so I was like, oh, man, he, he went to SEC school. Like, for, for like and, 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 man, if he can do that, I can do that. Um, and just even even more so, like, I can always think back to uh, I had a, a good friend that we kind of grew up, you know, and we were, I mean, basically the same guy in my, in my mind, you know, both two extremely smart guys, athletic guys, and who we wanted to be like definitely shaped our lives. You know, I, I look at, you know, Delandis is somebody I wanted to be like, uh, and he had, you know, another mentor that he wanted to be like, let's put it as wasn't doing all the right things, wasn't doing things, wasn't going to college, you know, wasn't always doing things the right way. And, you know, we kind of went, you know, two separate ways in life. And so I knew from that was just like who you want to, who you aspire to be and who you look up to uh, right. is going to shape, you know, it's going to shape your future. Um, let me see. So is there anything else that you are doing just in terms of impacting the community? You know, yeah. does this foundation kind of inspire uh, some future things that you may want to do? Yeah, completely. You know, I just got my pilot's license. And um, for me, there's, there's that was big because I want to show kids you can continue to keep doing things. It's like, yeah, outside of just NFL, there's other things, other endeavors that I love to challenge myself and 
uh, to continue to learn, but then also just representation. Like I love to go to places where there are not a lot of guys that look like me uh, and, and show them that we belong there and, be, and belong in those places. And then that way I can bring that into the foundation and start an aviation uh, branch of the, of the foundation to, to bring in more African-American pilots, black and brown pilots, because it's not something that you see a lot. Um, and so just, you know, going into spaces, you know, that don't look like us and bringing, you know, people that do and, and allowing them to be comfortable. So, you know, you're still relatively young and all that. So when it's all said and done, when it comes to football, then uh, I assume that you see yourself as a commercial pilot. You're going to be flying, you know, <laughs> one of those big, you know, um, with those big planes, right? Yeah. I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. That might, <laughs> that might be on the radar. But no, I, um, I mean, really, once football is over, like, I just want to, I, I want to give back. I continue to just give my time and help, you know, other kids out, help people, um, grow because like I, the, the, the more I help people the more addicted to that feeling of like I feel like your success becomes my success and so when a kid when a kid does something they're like hey I did this and I'm like I'm as fired up it's like you know I got an interception on a Sunday or something and I know right. you know when I get that same feeling from something like that I know I found my space you know you uh, play for one of the greatest coaches of all time if not the greatest in Bill Belichick and all that you know uh how does his coaching style rub off of you and how can you use that um, after you retire when it comes to helping kids? Yeah, I mean, I, I playing for New England and co playing for Coach Belichick is, for me, it was easy simply because everything that he embodies, everything that he demands from you, I was raised that way. My dad was that guy, you know, he was very uh, disciplined and and very, um, result driven, you know, and I grew up that way. So, you know, that's the same way Coach Belichick is. He's very result driven and disciplined and consistency. And one of the one of the big things he's always says is that every day he wakes up to fight complacency. And right. I think everyone, everyone can do that in their life is, is to fight complacency, not not be okay with where you are. Like you said, being the greatest coach ever, he could easily say, hey, I'm good. I don't have to worry about right. next year. I done did. Right. I've won this many Super Bowls, but just who he is as a person is fighting complacency and never settling for that. Uh, and I, I definitely carry that over into my personal life. Um, you know, any uh, are there any players that kind of share your same vision? And, uh, you know, do you kind of uh, bounce ideas off of those players? Definitely. Like I said, Devin McCourty. Like Devin McCourty is one of my guys that um, – he he was a it started as a mentorship but then I think along the way he's like I can learn something from you as well and we kind of go you know go back and forth and, and always give each other insight uh Adrian Adrian Phillips is another safety that we have you know very like-minded individual and you know Matthew Slater just those guys that, that have been in New England and have kind of uh, been guys that that kind of see life the same way I do it and are always trying to expand um, you know, especially outside of the field, just trying to expand their life and, you know, be good fathers and be, you know, good husbands and just be good men. Um, and just having that, you know, camaraderie of those guys, it always helps. Um, you know, so going to the NFL now and just kind of speaking a little bit about football, um, you know, before uh, or, or, or when you guys had Tom Brady, you know, you guys were the premier franchise you know he left and it ended up going to Tampa and now you guys have Mac Jones and you guys are in a bit of a transition period now um what is it going to take to kind of reestablish um the good franchise that you once were I, excuse me I think it's just to continue to do the things that you've always done um and just uh work like that's the, that's the beauty of like football. It's like life. You got to wake up every day and work. You know, yesterday doesn't matter. Um, there's no, you don't get an accolade today for what you did yesterday. You have to continue to work. And that was always the motto. You know, when I got into the league, we went to three Super Bowls uh, in a row and every year was different. There was no, um, there was no, hey, well, last year we did this. It didn't matter. And that's the same mentality you got to have now. Um you know and continue that that like what you did yesterday what you did last year doesn't matter um you know you have to continue every day to 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 show up and get better um just wondering if you can briefly talk about your background just as far as um you know how you came up you know I came up you know some people they they come up in a single parent household I came up in a two parent household um mm -hmm. like what did that look like for you and then, and then how did that help you um on your journey 
Man, I grew up uh, with my both of my parents. I was the youngest of three, um, two older sisters. And I always say I had the perfect balance of yin and yang with my parents because, like, my dad was just that stern, structure-driven, um, character-building individual that I, you know, that helped mold me in that space. But my mom always cared about education. She never cared if I played a sport or anything like that. She wanted to make sure that I had education and that my grades were always good and things like that. So I always felt like I had this great balance of yin and yang of, you know, you know, where my dad would cut, my mom would come in heel or a mom would push, my dad would, you know, add structure to. Um, so I, I definitely felt like that in itself, you know, added to my balance. And that's something that I always say. I can, I can always remember, you know, go, walking into the room, you know, and I would ask my mom a question. And what my dad said when he would butt in was the greatest thing I needed to hear that day. And vice versa, I would go to my dad and ask him a question. But what right. my mom ended up coming in and saying was the greatest thing I needed to hear. So growing up with that, to me, I consider that a blessing. All right, man. Uh, well, I think that is really great. Unless there's anything else that you want to add. I think that is it. That is it, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thanks for the conversation and all that. Much success to you. Um, on your season, except against my Eagles, you know, <laughs> uh, but, but I, I hope you have a great season though, man. Thank you so much. Oh man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're going to be sad week one. Oh man, I can't <laughs> wait. But the one thing that I do look forward to is, uh, the, you know, Tom Brady, you know, coming back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's going to be a good one. That's going to be awesome a good stuff. one, man.